This is Bangkok International Airport. You are clear for landing. Bangkok Airport is like no other airport on earth. Welcome to Thailand. This is my best smiling. It's where East meets West. Ching 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 ching. Buddhist meets backpacker. <laughs> that ride to the beach. And traveller meets trouble. You never see me in Thailand ever again. No, no, no. yes. And if the culture seems strange, <laughs> the language seems foreign. <laughs> and you're 6,000 miles from home. I'm stuck in Bangkok. Don't panic. There's an army of airport staff just waiting to help you out. Yeah. One way. How may I help you? <laughs> or another. Get in the line. So whether it's your gateway to a million once-in-a-lifetime experiences... It's all about love, love, love and love. ...or just the ticket to a good old-fashioned holiday nightmare... Look at all the cancelled flights! ...this is your final call. <laughs> really happy, everyone. Welcome... Passport, please. ...to Bangkok Airport. Every year, millions of visitors pour into Bangkok Airport. But what happens when you can't pour out? I've lost my British passport. I need cash. Today, a panic attack grounds Sarah in departures. I need to go today. Mm -hmm. I need to go today. Army vet John is down to his last 20p. I'm thinking about just doing something stupid and getting in jail. An atoll from India is detained by the tourist police. I've been through... Such extreme behaviours, the battlefield being the airport. Thailand may be a dream holiday destination. I think you've got to experience it, to be honest. But where do you turn when there's no way out? They call Bangkok the Airport of Smiles and Darren from Chingford can't wait to see the back of it. As you can see, it's a beautiful, um, lovely, lovely airport. Um, but unfortunately, I lost my British passport, so I'm stranded. I want to go home. He may have lost his most precious possession, but Darren's not panicking. He's planning to pick up an emergency passport from the British Embassy first thing tomorrow. So, to the British Embassy, I'll see you in the morning. Please get my visa emergency passport ready, because Darren Bond needs to go home. Darren's missus is already on her way back to London, and he's hoping that... Oh. You know, Judy, I'm going to have to go. I'm going to to cut you short. OK. But um, I really need to draw some emergency funds because I'm, I'm tired. But thank you for your time and um, Happy New Year. And we love England, mate. We're coming home. But inside the terminal, things take a turn for the worse. An emergency passport costs money, and the cash machine doesn't want to know. Luckily, there's another cash machine next door, but that doesn't want to know either. I need 95 pounds for the, um, the British Embassy to issue my um, emergency um, passport tomorrow. So I'm a bit, um, I'm trying to stay calm and find a solution. Um, obviously, I'm in a, I've never been to Bangkok before in my life, and um, yeah, I'm very tired, I haven't slept. But I'm going to call the bank directly now and uh, basically tell them the situation. But calling a Mumbai call centre from a Bangkok payphone is famously hard. Advisor, please. Advisor, 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 please. Um, I've lost my British passport. I'm stuck in Bangkok. Yeah? My, my, my missus is flying now to Heathrow. I need cash. My friend, my friend, your colleague, your colleague has confirmed it to me. Your colleague said after three minutes it will be released. I don't know what you're playing at, mate. Can't we draw cash out, mate? It's been 20 minutes, mate. Please. Are you trying to depress me, mate, or what? But do me a favour, and can you release my money, please? I'm getting annoyed now. Is that... Hello? An hour ago, Darren had no passport. Now he's got no passport and no way of getting one. Home is starting to look a long way away, but he's still not panicking. I know they're doing their job, and I'm not putting the bank down, but they have... Because of the extra stringent security, um, it has put me in a bad situation to go So I'm thinking, what am I going to do now? Then again, there are worse places to be stranded. What I'm going to say that this airport is one of the best airports I've seen.
Darren's not the only one having trouble leaving Bangkok Airport. I'm really not too sure. The terminal's full of confused-looking tourists who are looking for a way out. Still no idea where I'm going. Uh, stressful. Yeah, stressful and mental. Absolutely crazy. I think we're lost again. <laughs> yeah. <we'll... laughs> I mean, we just got in the airport <laughs> and we're lost already. This is how good we are. Luckily, help is always at hand because Bangkok Airport has its own dedicated police force a 90-strong team who specialise in helping travellers in trouble. Whatever your problem, chances are they're across it. Among the elite corps are officers Toy and Bai Tong. They're your first call when anything goes wrong. If they lost something, they don't know everything, just the tourist police. Very funny world, very exciting world here. Everything is here. Day and night, Bai Tong and the team tour the airport, looking for confused people to help. Bemuse Brits a speciality. When the passenger they saw the uniform of the police police, and they, and they think, in their opinion, they said the police can help them everything. But it's all worthwhile when a grateful traveller leaves a message in the police friendship book. Thank you very much, Curtis. Police woman, I us met. <laughs> yeah. And in their battle to keep the airport in order, the tourist police have a secret weapon. They call it a safe way. We control by by the food. Forward and backward. When we turn left, move like this. Turn light, move like this. <laughs> but policing the airport is a serious business. Bai Tong's been called back to base to help toy deal with a British passenger in distress. No, I'm shaking, I've got no sugar in me. I've got no food. I feel like I'm about to collapse. John's a former squaddy who spent the last two years travelling, but after a run of bad luck, the roads ended here. His passport, plane ticket and money all stolen. Basically, I'm stuck in Thailand. My visa's run out and I'm, I've got no money, all been stolen, no food, no water. I've got 10 baht in my pocket. I'm thinking about just... Um, doing something stupid and getting in jail where I can be fed and looked after. John's desperate to get back to Britain and he's struggling to keep it together. I've took over 100 milligrams of diazepam in the last hour just to try and cope, keep me calm. But they're helping, they're trying to help. It's really easy. We try to help and try to get some help from the embassy also. We have to talk with the embassy, the last choice. So maybe the embassy will contact his family or someone who can help him. Well, you can help me by um, getting me back to England. The embassy say they'll try to help John, but he'll need to show up in person. I talked to the embassy and they told me you have to take a taxi to go there, but the taxi you have to pay by yourself. Oh. Of course. Of course. What with 10 bar? Me? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'd rather just say it was tough or go to jail. The problem is he don't have money to pay. He said he have only 10 baht. With John down to his last 20p, Toy and Bai Tong decide to help him out of their own pockets. Give you some money. Huh? 
private money we will give you. All that money. Around, I'm, I'm not sure how much, but I will five. give you 300 baht for transportation to the embassy. John's beginning to feel there's no way out. I was all nice and happy yesterday. Ready for my trip back to the UK. See the friends and family. At the embassy, John's given some money for the night and an appointment for tomorrow, but his future's still up in the air. Who knows? I, maybe I'll have to live on the streets of Bangkok. And, uh, I've got a cushion in my bag and a pillar, so just be on the streets of Bangkok for the next three years, join. I find, find some of the homeless gangs. If getting out of Bangkok can be tough, getting in isn't a doddle either. Immigration is your first barrier, and it can be a tense time for new arrivals. You know you've not done anything wrong, but just haven't seen all the guards you like. Hold on to my bags. They told me to shave because they prefer if you kind of come in their country shaven. I'm kind of worried about my passport number. It's not the same as the old one. <laughs> I don't want to be banged up here. Sorry, I'm in a bit of a tiz. I thought I had it all. The golden rule is to have all your paperwork ready. Have I not given... It's not that one, is it? Bangkok's one of the top long-haul destinations for young British backpackers. Hang on, I've got... Sorry, I do have it here. Lara's jacked in her job to spend a year travelling. Photo, please. Somewhere. But even backpackers need an address for their first night. I don't know if the, it's on Koh Sam Road. Thank you. I was a bit scared then for a minute there. <laughs> but now I'm through passport control, I feel excited again. Yay, my bag made it. Woohoo! Bangkok can be overwhelming, but Laura's done her research. The flight was quite long, but I just watched films, one of which was the beach, because I thought it would prep me for coming to Thailand, and I'm really glad I watched it. Can't wait to see Bangkok tonight. Laura's going to meet her friend Becca at the airport, but where is she? No sign of Becca. Uh-oh. She should be here by now. She should be, shouldn't she? Oh, hang on, I got a text. OK. She can't get through immigration without the hostel details. Becca's here! Can't wait to see her! So excited! Woo! Eventually, they're reunited. You're here! The people at immigration seem really nice, actually. Um, when I said I didn't have my hotel details, she kind of just went, oh, no. So I'm guessing it happens quite a lot. This is it. This is where it all actually starts. I only feel the heat. Lara and Becca have one night in Bangkok. Just time to taste the nightlife before coming back to the airport to catch the early morning flight to Phuket. Well, that's the theory. We're going to spend one night in Bangkok, and then tomorrow we're going down to Phuket early in the morning. We're flying out at 8 in the morning, so whatever we do tonight, we have to make sure that we are completely with it tomorrow. I'm hoping that we're not going to sleep tonight. Sorry, Mum. Um, <laughs> go down Koh Sam Road, mix in with the backpackers, and then go straight on our flight tomorrow. We have to make the most of it. You snooze, you lose. While Lara's adventure is just beginning, in downtown Bangkok, Darren just wants a way out. Basically, they're coming to get an emergency passports um, and to get back home to the, to the United Kingdom, basically, to London, where I live, with my family, all my life. The bank has unblocked his card, but ploughing through the application process is a real ball ache. It's very stressful, man, but I'm trying to stay calm and just get it done. Because if I start worrying, then I'm not going to get it done, so I'm trying my best to stay calm. 
Darren's not alone. Britain's near the top of the international lost passports league table. We like to keep airport staff like Kajib on their toes. The number guess for British people is a uh, lost passport. Every day tourists tell me, we forgot it in a taxi, we forgot it in the toilet. And it's not just us Brits. I forgot to take it with me when I got off the plane. Maybe on the toilet I put it. Oh, yeah. Can you give me your name, please? So you will see many passports here. <laughs> this one, this one. A lot of passport. Reuniting passenger and passport isn't always straightforward. John's stolen passport is just the latest in a string of misfortunes that have left him stranded in Bangkok. Well, I was in the Grand Air Guards. I joined when I was about 20 years old. First three years, we're doing public duties, standing outside Buckingham Palace, you know, with a big bear skin and the... Yeah, so it was quite strict and mundane. And then Afghan was just a total different ball game. It was just... I suppose, well, it was a war zone, weren't it? We went into a village and then the Taliban just came out in an RPG. Struck me, I think it hit me in the chest. And took my fingers off. I can't really tell you much after that. I woke up in Birmingham six weeks later. I had a traumatic brain injury. Um, lost the most of my left hand. A few scars, broken jaw, a few broken bones here and there. It's a tracheostomy. I think they've done it on the helicopter. I'm not sure how they've done it, but it damaged my voice box a bit. So. But I'm alive, that's the main thing. Many of us ain't. John left the army five years ago, but part of him still misses it. I want to see the world. Well, that's what I joined the army for, but obviously I'm not, not in the army anymore. So I'll see the world on my own. This trip, this is to basically find myself, I suppose. And hopefully return to England a better man than a left. But England seems a long way off. For the moment, at least, he's stuck in Bangkok with no way out. <laughs> at Bangkok Airport, Jacob, Brad, Dane and Grant are looking for a way out too. I don't even um, know where we're going. We don't know where the exit is. <laughs> We've come this far, we can't get lost now. We're here. <laughs> Exit. The boys from Kent have just flown in. They've taken a month off work to discover Thailand. I work in a fish and chip shop. Uh, Dane's a delivery, delivery driver. Delivery driver. Grant's a scientist. Yeah. And nah. Jacob's a zookeeper. <laughs> I just work for a safari bus. He's a lion tamer. <laughs> Go with that. <laughs> it's so much cooler. <laughs> the boys will travel around the islands for a month, ending up at the full moon party at Koh Phangan. It's somewhere that we've never been before, so we thought we'd change it up rather than going on like a normal lads' holiday to Malia or Magaluf or anything like that. It would be a bit better to go a bit further afield and see more of the world. I don't know, just like do Thailand when, while you're young, while you don't have responsibilities, kids or anything. Just get out of the way and done with. And it's a month, I'm going out there for a month. I think you've got to experience it, to be honest. You've got to take it by the horns and just <laughs> rattle it into submission, sort of thing. <laughs> Getting deep with ladyboys. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come out for the parties. That's about it, really. I've got to be careful what I say. My missus will be listening. <laughs> I'm the only one with one. <laughs> Still under the thumb, even though yeah, we're hundreds it. of miles away. <laughs> Do you know where it is? Yeah. But nothing in Kent prepares you for that first blast of Bangkok heat. Oh my God, it's warm. Oh, good. It's really God, it's really hot. I'm wearing ski socks because uh, my feet are really cold. <laughs> oh, where's Wally? I'm sweating. I need to go jump in a pool and get a beer or something. Just chill out. Cold ready. beer and swimming pool sounds amazing right now. So, are they ready for the trip of their lives? The worst thing, like, obviously, one of us falling ill, getting injured, ended up in hospital. That's got to be the worst thing. Worst case scenario, touch wood, that won't happen. I wouldn't say it's dangerous. I'm saying it's dangerous as what you think it is. Quite possibly. Every yeah, country is dangerous. Yeah. yeah. Every country is dangerous in their own way, and it makes it more dangerous us never being here, so we're going to 
just have to keep our wits about us as we're going round and keep our heads screwed on. We like to think we're four intelligent lads and we'll be able to manage it, but <laughs> I, bet, I guess time will tell. The boys may be quietly confident, but holiday mishaps are ten to the bar in Thailand. At the medical centre, travellers can find their holiday extended indefinitely if doctors decide they're not fit to fly. On standby today, it's Dr. Pan. Here working here inside the airport is, is quite a stressful job and complicated because we don't deal just only the disease. In some cases, they don't want to postpone the flight, so I have to advise them that you should not fly. If you fly, uh, everything will become worse and nobody can help you. On the plus side, the hours are good and you get your own segue. Everybody would like to use it too. When we pass a group of people, they will be shouting out loud. That was a segue. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Suddenly, the medical centre okay. takes a call. There's an emergency in departures. We was informed that there was a patient that had a difficulty of breathing, so we had to go to the fourth floor. With initial details sketchy, doctors never know exactly what to expect. I cannot predict what I would see the patient, maybe just only fainting, hyperventilation, or maybe the real chest problem. Up on the fourth floor, Dr. Pan finds 22-year-old Sarah in the grip of an apparent panic attack. <laughs> With Sarah hyperventilating, Dr. Pan wants to calm her down back at the medical centre. I will bring you to our clinic on the first floor with your luggage. The first thing that she says to us is she's got panic attack. So it means that this is not the first time that she suffered from this. Maybe it happened so many times. Just dizzy because I just didn't breathe properly for a long time. Where are we going? Oh, Trini, in the airport. When we saw her, we checked her blood pressure, her oxygen, everything is fine, just only from, from her stress. I just want to go home and play. Yes. Right now, I will bring her to our clinic. Maybe we will observe for her clinic call at least 30 minutes. Sarah's going to have to calm down quickly if she's going to make her fly back home. Many passengers find themselves staying in Bangkok longer than they bargained for. Like Lara and Becca, they're back at the airport after their night out on the Khao San Road. Let's see. Yes. We've got about 10 minutes to spare if we're lucky. They missed their early morning plane to Phuket, so they've had to book a new flight, and now they're late for that. So last night, we went out in Bangkok, we went down Khao San Road, went to a few bars and things, and it was all good. We left on time. And then, yeah, we didn't set our alarm. We woke up at um, half nine. We were meant to be in Phuket at half nine. I hope we have enough time to go through security. We'll find out now, I hope so. No, this is it, OK? Phuket attracts more than 10 million visitors a year, and most of them seem to be checking in today. I'm freaking out a bit. I think I'm going to go and ask some of my staff down there if we're going to be OK. We need to check in by 11, and it's now nearly half 11, and I'm freaking out. Is that someone? I'll go and ask that guy. 
The only way out is to jump the queue. To miss one flight might be careless, but to miss two... The lady said that I can check in on the machine. Shall I go and try and do it while you're there? OK. Pending boarding passes. Yay! They've got their boarding passes, but just 20 minutes to make the gate. We're all checked in and we've got to go and get a flight now. Woo! And when they finally get there. It's delayed. Can you put how very do they? Well. There's the plane. Let's just get on. Oh, let's just get on. Let's just go. It could be on the beach by now. <laughs> Flight PT924 about for Phuket is now ready for boarding. Hey, we can't wait to get on that flight. Yeah, next stop the cat. Five hours later than planned, they're finally on their way. And their adventure is just beginning. While Lara and Becca head off to the islands, there's good news for Darren too. He's finally got hold of his emergency passport and London's calling. <laughs> yeah. yeah! London town, lady! That's it? No? That. <laughs> wow, oh, thank you for everything. Home. I've got the passport, now I'm going home. Uh -huh. We say in England, sweet, sweet home. Hey, yeah. do we? Thank you. England. <laughs> Passport. Boom, boom. So let's go. Back to England. Hello, sir. The British man is going to go now. You take care. Thank you. Thank you. Airport, please, sir. Hello, mate. You OK? Good. Thank you for the um, drive to the airport. Yeah, yeah thank you. Please, because we've got the passport now. Uh -huh. We, we can leave Bangkok. Uh, I do know if I have the passport. Yes, passport now. English one, British. <laughs> you like that? Taxi, yeah? Yes. Oh, no, good. No, we can leave now. Yeah. We can leave Bangkok. Oh. London, OK? Oh. Let's go. Darren's holiday hasn't gone quite as planned. Here we go. Check-in time. Yeah. But he's seeing it as a learning experience. It's been very difficult. Um, a lot of paperwork involved. And I'll advise anybody, just be so cautious with your British passport because you don't realise how valuable it is until you lose it. Um, passport? Please, be careful, please. Great Britain, here we come. But not quite yet. Sorry? I filled the form first. Should I go over here and come back? Thank you. OK. Darren's forgotten to complete his boarding card. Can I borrow a pen, please? <laughs> While Darren tackles his final piece of paperwork, Sarah's in the medical centre, still unsure whether she'll be able to catch her flight. She's just want to get on the plane. No, it's done oh, Where's my bag? After Sarah's panic attack at the gate, Dr. Pan must decide if she's fit to fly. And what about the tablets that you take for a penny? I just bring them to a bag. And we prescribe antibiotics for I you. I can't do it. I don't do oh, needles. Well, that's, that's I can't. Let me. Could, could you put it under your tongue? Okay. 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 Is it a needle? I don't like needles. Oh, actually, it's not a needle. It's just thermometer only. Oh, okay. No, under. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Please, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank Sarah's suffered panic attacks in the past, but it's worse when it happens so far from home. It normally happens when I'm with lots of people in a crowded space and a bit stressed. But they normally last a couple of hours and I get better by breathing through a McDonald's bag. But I couldn't communicate that to anyone because no one understood me or was just staring at me. <laughs> I think that most of foreign, foreign passengers quite often to get panic attack. This condition is not a real physical disease, it's just only for a mental disorder. The attack is just the latest in a series of holiday mishaps. I don't think Thailand likes me very much. Food poisoning, 
I did a cooking class and got chilly in my eye. Oh, I just want to go. Beautiful remember? country. After Sarah's had a 15 minute nap, Dr. Pan returns to deliver her verdict. Feeling better now? Okay, don't worry. I will make a call to inform the airline staff that you're fit to fly so they can check in for you. A moment. I think that's for, for this case, she can fly because she knows what happened to her and she knows how to control that. So I don't concern a lot. Am I staying in the wheelchair or am I walking? I agree. You're going to take me? That's yeah. good. I had to give the medical um, certificate and then it was sorted. Very easy, straight through, bags all pa packed in, so I'm off to Melbourne. Sarah's got her fit to fly certificate, but how fit to fly is she? Not feeling good at all. Dizzy, feel like I'm going to vomit. I don't know how I'm going to do late the takeoff, but I need to be on this plane. As boarding time nears, the anxiety returns. Oh, I don't like the look of those planes taking off. For a moment, it's not looking great. I can't do this. How am I going to do this? But at the 11th hour, she rallies. I've been going too quickly. From the stresses and strains of Bangkok Airport lie Thailand's Holiday Islands, a magnet for thousands of Brits heading for the famous full moon parties. Joining the crowds this month are Brad and the boys from Kent. You just got to do the full moon. It's, it's one, one of those things. Package, really. yeah. One of those things you got to experience once. Like if you don't do it, then you're a bit like, why have you come to Thailand? After ten days, the boys are having a great time, apart from the odd dodgy curry. Some of the food has gone straight through. It's absolutely it's like, yeah. just undescribable. Don't eat as much Thai food as everybody says. That's yeah. not such a great idea. It's good to pick in the culture, but really, it, it does go straight through you. <laughs> and everyone was like, yeah, just a little bit of sauce, and then you end up fucking soaking it in it. And you're like, it's not until you bite in it you think that is going to kick me in the ass tomorrow morning. And it does. It really does. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Tie Tommy aside, the main worry is Brad's complete failure to pull. There's plenty of girls here, man. You're just not confident enough to talk to them. Hopefully, someone like will kind of get desperate and start crying so I can kind of make a move on them. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> The parties may be a blast, but back at Bangkok Airport, the tourist police spend a lot of time dealing with full moon fallout. The young people come to Thailand, he just don't think every, everything too much. Just travel, just party. When someone lose everything, I think is it, maybe it's the reason that can make them gonna be like this. I have my passport between my wallet and now it, it's not there anymore. So it must be on the airplane or something. Today, Bai Tong and Toy are trying to help full moon reveler Emily get back to Finland. I don't even have a cell phone because I lost that too. That's another story. Fresh from the party, Emily's lost his passport, mobile and money. But where and when and how? I really can't tell you because I don't even know it myself. At the parties, let's go by now. <laughs> OK, the staff of the airline, they try to shaking okay. and looking for your passport, so you have to wait in here, okay. and then we we'll try to call back. So I will be there. Wait here, wait okay. here. For Emily, the last few days have been a bit of a blur. We were partying, and I found myself bleeding in the forest. There was blood coming out of my head. I don't got my cell phone with me, and I don't got my money or anything, and I even got some a uh, street dog's collar around my neck and there was this big, um, big cloak and 
I don't know anything about that night. Yeah, I don't want to be that kind of a stupid boy anymore that I have been, and I don't have to get fucked up anymore so much. So I just want to get home. Okay, sir. You have a good news. Okay. The staff of the airline they file your passport, and then you have oh. to wait here. They will bring it here. Fact, Fifteen uh, minutes. That's a good thing. Thanks. Thank you so much. So much. He yeah, am so lucky. My heart was beating. This is our last night here at, at Bangkok, and I don't want to do anything stupid anymore. So I just have to be careful now. Relieved, remorseful, and reunited with his passport, Emily's free to fly back to Finland. I'm so, I'm so glad for that point. It just saved my life. Thanks for everyone. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thailand's reputation as a party destination can throw up all kinds of problems at the airport. Not just for the police, Officer Beam works over in check-in. Boarding pass, please. She's become highly skilled in spotting the telltale signs of tipsiness. Their face will be red and their smell, how how they talk to me. Yeah, someone, someone they, they drink beer in front of me. They, they take off, yeah, take off the clothes in front of the cabin crew. Yeah. So I have to take that passenger to the police station, and he's I like us better when we're What do you get that? Anyone who appears too intoxicated can find themselves stuck in Bangkok until they sober up. Just follow the rule, but try to tell them properly. Yes. No matter how hungry they are. Did you have a party? Are you? Uh, are you okay? You, do you want to go on another flight? Do you want to take a race first? Today, Lewis and Grant are on their way home to Cornwall, and Lewis is feeling a bit fragile. I didn't get in until about 6 o'clock this morning. I had to get up at 8 for my taxi. But it's been worth it for eight wild weeks and a full moon party to remember. Yeah, yeah, two months of absolute pure fun, and I'm yeah. glad to go home right now. Yeah, yeah, two bullshit. months of absolute carnage. How are you? Pfizer, thank you very much. Yeah. And you? Fabulous. Okay. On a New Year's Eve, Koh Phangan. That was epic. 30,000 people raving on the beach. I can't get better than that. I want to get a chance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can down all this water. Lewis and Grant pass beam sobriety check with flying colours, despite having a late one. Last night was the final night. It was messy. I'm yeah, it's dying good. Now. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's good, good time. times. Yeah, mushroom shakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mushroom shakes. I fell off a balcony, a two-story balcony, and got away scot free pretty much. That's why you have a lucky horse, you tattoo it, see? <laughs> With Lewis's lucky horseshoe working overtime, the boys gallop through immigration. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Airside, Lewis celebrates with a beer, but Grant's still working up to it. I'm trying to get some life in me so I get a Chang down my throat. <laughs> I need one final Chang before I leave Thailand. One, six, or two, yeah. But as the gate gets nearer, Grant feels queerer. <laughs> Must have been something he ate. Raw chicken on Koh Sam Road. Yeah, not a good idea. That actually looks like pepper. It looks like wheat. Yeah. I feel yeah. alright. Got to get on with it. Yeah. It's part of the fun of Asia. Live on the toilet for a night, and then you'll be all right the next day. It just happens that I'm in the airport, so I look like a feral beast. Yeah. Oh no, it's leaking. Uh, oh. oh no. Right, let's go empty it. As Grant's condition worsens, Lewis stages an intervention. I got a water, sandwich, some crisps. It's going to be a fun 12-hour flight anyway. The crisps seem to do the trick. Bit of chum will come out then. Be all right? You'll be all right, boy. Get up and walk it off. Yeah. And after that little hiccup, Bean clears Lewis and Grant for takeoff. He is ill, but he is quite healthy, so he is free to fly. As 
Lewis and Grant Jet home, Army Vet John's back at the British Embassy hoping for his emergency passport. And today, he's in a more positive frame of mind. Yeah, I feel good today. I feel more optimistic and happier. I was a bit down in the dumps yesterday. I don't need to get an emergency passport. And then a flight out of here, hopefully. Number 35. Looks like I've got quite a long way. I'm going to sit down and read my book for a bit. That's OK. The British Embassy in Bangkok deals with around 9,000 customers a year, so a good book's not a bad idea. See him reading my book, Shantaram. It's about a guy on the run in India with no visa <laughs> and no passport. <laughs> it's starting to sound familiar. Could be, could be me writing a book like this in the next few months. <laughs> John's case is more complicated than most. This isn't his first emergency passport and his visa's lapsed. The embassy say they'll help, but it'll take time. Just told me what the score was, says he has to wait five days. So I'm in a bit of trouble at the minute, but I've been through worse. But if he's gonna stay in Bangkok, John's gonna need money. So who are you gonna call? Hello, Mum. Uh, still in Thailand. Have you got four hundred pound I can borrow till Wednesday? While John faces five more days in Bangkok, Officer Baitong and the tourist police have been called to the airport concourse to deal with another traveller in distress. After two weeks travelling round Thailand, Atul has been found wandering the airport perimeter, half naked and with no belongings. Hello, can I help you? What problem? Do you have some problem? Atul starts telling an incredible story. He says he's been hiding near the airport all night in fear of his life. Baitong takes him back to Tourist Police HQ to find out more. I want to get back to India as soon as possible before I lose myself. I lost everything else apart from you. I have to run for my life. I was being chased. Who is chasing you? How do I know? Thai person? Yeah, Thai person. How many person? Uh, 10, 15. Okay, we were looking for your t-shirts for clothes. Yeah, just just one short and one t-shirt. Take a shower so, first, and yeah. then I will call to your embassy and contact your family. The police try to cheer him up by giving him one of their official t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> we have some t-shirts, but we don't have them. It's OK? When Atul doesn't laugh, Baitong realises something seriously wrong. I think he has something, something wrong with himself, but we don't know. He didn't tell us. I think he has some ill, and he looks hungry. The police get him a sandwich, but he still seems anxious and distressed. First time in my life I got the scare, death scare. Never had. I never had it. You have to buy a new ticket or make a new passport. All right? You need to talk Indian embassy. Atul speaks to his embassy, but it's Friday night. They're about to close for the weekend. What did they say? Hmm? What did they say? They say Monday you come, I will let you know. Huh? Monday you come? Monday. With nowhere to go and no money, Atul will have to spend the next two days at the airport alone and Baitong's worried. I think when you go to another country, I know that's feeling when you don't have family, don't have friends, you don't, you don't know how to talk with another one, don't have, don't have money to pay some food, cannot fly. I think this feeling is, is not good. So, I, so that means I have to help him. Down at the medical centre, Ellen is hoping for the all clear to fly home to Sweden. On my calf, I have um, like wounds from, from the fangs from the dog, which are quite deep, and the, those are open, so they have, uh, they have drainage in them. Okay, good. Follow me, please. Yep. Yeah. Ellen had been in Thailand just three days before disaster struck. 
I got bitten by a dog while walking. Un unprovoked, actually. I didn't do anything to the dog. I was walking by the beach and uh, suddenly I felt something around my leg. So I didn't even really see the dog before it had happened. So we immediately went into the medical center. They saw it had gotten infected, so I was uh, hospitalized for five days. And they had to do a small surgery on the front of my leg. With more than 100,000 stray dogs on the streets of Bangkok alone, it's a growing problem for the medical team led by Dr. Art. We do see a lot of uh, patients with a dog bite or monkey bites also, because the, pas the passenger always like to go to play with them. Yeah, then they, they just, yeah. Ellen acted quickly, so but that much. didn't stop the wound getting infected. She's got the selfies to prove it. <laughs> Don't pass out. <laughs> this one got over 100 likes. When you have holes in your leg, I guess it gets reactions. With Ellen's flight leaving in the next 24 hours, she needs a fit-to-fly certificate before she boards the plane. Hello. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, you got a dog, a dog bite. bite? Yes. It's a big one? Yeah, a big one. Nasty dog. He hadn't brushed his teeth because they were dirty, so I got infected. Yeah. I haven't really looked myself because I don't no, want to no, no. see it. <laughs> it's really good. It's really good. Oh, yeah, it's really good. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. For Dr. Art, it's a clean-up job. The hard work's been done, luckily for Ellen. The wound looks quite deep. That's why we have to put the drain gas inside the wound to release the, 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 the pus. The dangerous of this is uh, if uh, she didn't get a good treatment, she may lose her leg later on due to infection. <laughs> I do like my leg. <laughs> so the wound's redressed and Dr. Art's happy to let Ellen fly. After a holiday, she won't forget. The plan was to go scuba diving. <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> Sometimes things don't go as planned. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> but the experience hasn't put Ellen off Thailand, just dogs. I'm actually kind of more of a cat person, <laughs> especially now, I would say. <laughs>Atul spent the night sleeping rough at the airport, but now he's been brought back in after police found him in an agitated state. Lord has happened, Lord has happened, Lord has happened. Mm -hmm. You're smoking, you okay? I won't smoke. Oh, OK, good. Bai Tong's worried about his mental health. Yesterday he is not like this. He looked normal person yesterday, but, but not like today. Hello. Hi. Hi, my name is May. As concern grows, the police bring in Nurse May from the medical centre. So um, the police call us because they um, just want to make sure you're all right. So do you mind if I just sit and talk, OK? She quickly realises Atul needs help. Um, so there's no place for you to stay here. So like you see, there's a lot of tourists here, a lot of passengers. You need a bed, you need to get some rest, OK? We want you to just to see a doctor in the hospital, OK? It's gonna be someone taking care of you there, okay? Can you stop in 20 minutes? But Atul declines treatment and decides to leave. Start shooting. Okay, no, 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 no
After their holiday of a lifetime, the boys from Kent are heading back home. Here we go, PG they made it round the islands, with just the odd wrong turn. We went to the wrong airport at one yeah. point on this holiday. <laughs> Next time we come traveling, we're going to take our parents so we actually know where we're going. Make them just sit in the corner while we just have some fun. <laughs> so you don't actually feel clean, though. After various upsets, the guys have kind of given up on Thai food. We really stuck to like the old pizzas and burgers and stuff. We've been so Western, it's unreal. Not even the Western food have breathed me out here. <laughs> I was just trying to bad stuff like the whole time. Brad didn't pull, but he won't be going home empty-handed. I bought a really cool like antique. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. It looks like something from Jumanji. <laughs> this cost me yeah. 150 quid. It's got like a tattoo kit in it. Like the old traditional tattoo kit. And I was like, that looks pretty like expensive. So I thought I'm gonna buy that. We went back the next day and she had another one sitting there. <laughs> she said this is really rare. And he's got the tattoo to go with the kit, just like Dane's. Um, so I, I got it done. Coffee's me. But we've got it in different places. <laughs> we always said that we were gonna get matching tattoos. One of the lines means that you you become more attracted to the opposite sex. That intrigued me. <laughs> That's the main reason I got it. So While Brad dreams on, the boys head for the gate after one last Thai meal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, triple burger. Chicken, no, no, chicken and stuff. Bangkok, John's not had a square meal in three days, but today he's one step closer to finding a way out. Got a phone call from my mum now. She's been worried for the last couple of days. Um, she's lent me the money to get a flight home. So that's part, part of my mission. So I'm on my way now to get to the Western Union to get some money. I'm down to my last 20 baht. God bless my visitor. A quick trip to pick up the cash and his immediate troubles are over. Yeah, I've got 36,000 baht, so it's enough for my flight, but now I've got to wait whether I can get a passport or not. So, I've got enough to live and survive. John's now got the money to stay in Bangkok till he's issued with the paperwork that will finally bring him back to England. And after three days in hospital, Atul too is on his way home. A family friend has come to take him back to India. I've been through such extreme behaviors. It's absolutely paranoid, gone insane. Everybody following me, everybody trying to kill me. The battlefield being the airport. At the hospital, I came to my senses. And from then on, I re regained my consciousness. And uh, now my focus is clear in life, what to do, what not to do. So it's Sawadi, as they say, to Bangkok Airport. However big the hangover, wherever you put your passport, <laughs> yeah. it's good to know you can usually find your way out. Get the roast dinner on quickly. Don't forget the your puddings and, 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 and all the trimmings, all right? Next time at Bangkok Airport, there's trouble in paradise. No. Oh, my God. Look at all the cancelled flights. What's going on? As protesters take to the streets, the tourists run for cover. I walked out of the hotel room and there's shooting going on. The English Thai boxing team go into battle. As soon as that bell rings, he's got three rounds, so just go for it. Let's go! Keep going, go! Go! And the tourist police have a fight on their hands. This is the first time somebody tried to kill officer. <laughs> when we check in again at Bangkok Airport. Thanks for sending in your fantastic Bangkok Airport photos. Here's one of our favourites from Carolyn from Aberdeen on honeymoon with her hubby. Congratulations to you both. <laughs>